Coming up on Network Africa. Senegal's former president, Abdoulaye Wadi, has announces his decision to run for parliamentary elections in July. Thousands of commuters are left stranded following a taxi strike across South Africa's coastal city of Durban. And the recycling project in Senegal is transforming old tires and waste into functional structures for schools and public places. We we'll begin the program today in West Africa, where Senegal's former president, 91-year-old Abdoulaye Wad, uh, will be contesting his for a seat in parliament in the July elections. He will top the list for the opposition PDS party. Mr. Wadi served as the president from 2000 to 2012, and he lost the 2012 election to Macky Sall. Analysts say a parliamentary victory for the opposition would give Wadi the means to obtain an amnesty for his son, Karim, who enjoyed considerable ministerial powers under his father, but was sentenced to six years in prison in 2015. Karim Wadi was also ordered to pay a fine of more than 210 million euros for illicit enrichment. He received a presidential pardon in June 2016 after a total of more than three years and now lives abroad. However, an amnesty would lift any doubts over his eligibility in politics. Thousands of people have taken to the streets of uh, Al uh, Hosima in northern Morocco to demand the wealth, the release of a well-known activist. Reports say riot police uh, were involved in a tense standoff with protesters but later retreated. Nasser Zafafi was arrested on Monday and charged with threatening national security. He has organized months of protest against unemployment and corruption. The mass protests were triggered last October by the death of fishmonger uh, Mushini Fikri, who was crushed to death by a rubbish truck as he tried to rescue his stock that had been confiscated by the police. Fuel shortages have paralyzed the small central African nation of Burundi, threatening further damage to an economy that has been weakened by years of political violence. The problem has damaged two big foreign investors, Kenya's Kenkobil and South Africa's Engine, a subsidiary of Malaysian Parastatal Petronas. These shortages, uh, which forced the government to introduce rationing on May the 16th, have paralyzed commerce and caused food prices to jump by around a third, raising the prospect of a wave of economic migration. More than 400,000 people have already fled Burundi into the volatile Central African region. Anti-corruption campaigners say that the fuel shortages became severe after Burundian company Interpetrol Trading Limited received the lion's share of dollars that are allocated by the central bank to import fuel. The central bank has, however, refused to comment on the matter. In South Africa, thousands of commuters have been left stranded following a taxi strike across the coastal city of Durban. Local media reports say taxis blocked most of the main routes into and out of the city. Many commuters also had to walk to work as no taxis were operating. The taxi industry is protesting against the high price of the locally built Toyota Quantum taxi, which now costs $35,000. They argue that the same vehicle costs just over $15,000 fully imported 10 years ago. Access to the Toyota plant in a prospection south of the city has also been blocked. Let's get more on the story from a South African journalist, Bukukile Diko, who joins us live on the program. You're welcome to Network Africa. Okay, we'll get back to him later. We can't seem to get that connection. Uh, well, we are staying in South Africa. Nigeria's Chief of Staff, Air Marshal, Chief of Air Staff, that's Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, is on a working visit to the country as part of the implementation phase of some of the military cooperation uh, MOU signed with South Africa. 
He has held meetings with his South African counterpart and is expected to be part of South Africa's air capability on Thursday. Our South Africa Bureau Chief Betty Dibia reports. Received by his South African counterpart, Lieutenant General Fabian Siman. Both sides signed a number of agreements after a closed-door meeting. Uh, there are certain areas that South Africa has, uh, is more competent or has competencies. And then there are also certain areas that they think uh, we can assist. Part of the working visit has also included presentations and side visits of military aviation services facilities. We asked the air chief areas being looked at to improve not just the nation's air capabilities, but also ground aspects like base defense, especially following recent attacks on military bases in the country. What we have done is to change the concept of base defense and introduce a new concept. So this new base defense concept has now been introduced and it's been implemented in most of the bases. But like any other new program, sometimes you have hiccups that are there and you must admit that they're there and also try to see how you can get the guys that are really involved to understand the new concept and try to key into it properly. How is the fight against Boko Haram going? Certainly the situation has substantially changed. There are still isolated uh, cases of suicide bombing. Uh, but on the whole, if you look at the situation in 2014 and now, I think the Commander-in-Chief has uh, created the enabling environment for us to be very effective. Away from insurgency, we also asked him what has been done about the recent alleged human rights abuses by Air Force personnel at the Oshun State University. With the kind of uh, direction we have provided in the last eight months, we have made it very clear that we will not tolerate any violation of human rights of any individual. As soon as I get the details, what I can assure Nigerians, not only ASU, is that Nigerian Air Force is a professional service and therefore we'll take appropriate steps where we feel our personnel have uh, uh, operated outside the provisions of the law. We'll be very decisive in dealing with those that are involved. The Chief of Air Staff is expected to attend the South African Air Force Air Capability Show in the Limpopo province on Thursday before returning to Nigeria the next day. From Pretoria, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. So let's get back to that story about the taxi strike in Durban, South Africa. We have more from that story. And a South African journalist, uh, Bazu Kile Diko, joins us live from on the program. You're welcome to Network Africa. Hello, hello, Jackie. Right. What more can you tell us about the taxi strike? What I can tell you is that um, taxi operators, um, particularly those under the South African National Taxi Association, made it known that from this morning, none of their buses would be running on the street. Basically, their, their, their problem is with Toyota. They say that the high cost of the Toyota Quantum buses that government introduced 10 years ago is ridiculously high and, and um, that the insurance that they have to pay for the buses as well, the minibus taxis, are also incredibly high. Uh, so they took to Toyota headquarters, which are in Isipingo or in KZN in KwaZulu-Natal, to let it be known that they are not impressed and they want Toyota to do something about this. And as you can imagine, Durban being the third biggest city in South Africa has thousands of commuters who do rely on minibus taxis to take them to their relative places of work. It created quite a massive headache for, for commuters this morning. Also motorists, as some of these uh, uh, mini, uh, minibus operators actually blockaded roads around uh, several townships, including the Durban CBD, uh, uh, as they made it known uh, that they are unimpressed with the high cost of the quantum buses. To give you an idea of the cost and why it is that they are up in arms, 10 years ago, to get a Toyota quantum bus, it would cost about 220,000 rand. Now, 10 years later, it's about 450,000 rand, and that's before interest. 